Okay, so to start this um, early assessment or basic skills review, uh, the first thing we're going to do here is work with some fractions. We're going to add two fractions right there. And these two fractions you can see uh, for problem number one are mixed numerals, and we need to change them back into uh, uh, improper fractions. So I'm going to do that first by uh, coming here and saying 6 times 1 is 6 plus 5 more, and that's going to become um, 11. Uh, divided by 6. Sorry about the pen. I'll get that straight in a second. And then the other one is going to be plus. Here we have 8 times 2 is 16 plus 3 more is 19 uh, divided by 8. Okay, uh, the pen's a little wonky on me. I'll get this straight in a second. Okay, so now we want to add these fractions, but you see we have a 6 and an 8, so we need a common denominator. So this will be equal to two new fractions here with a common denominator of uh, 24. So we'll put a 24 here and a 24 here. Now notice that 24 is the smallest number that both 6 and 8 go into evenly. Uh, 6 goes into 24 4 times. 4 times 11 of course is 44. Uh, and then 8 here goes into 24 here. 3 times 3 times 19 is uh, 57. Uh, sorry about the bad numbers. We'll get this straight here in a minute, I promise. Uh, and that's going to be equal to, well, now we can write this as a single number, uh, 24 in the denominator. And in the numerator, we need to add 44 and 57, and that's going to be 101. Uh, right there, 101. And then we would try to reduce this. Now, I notice it was given to me in mixed numerals over here, and we actually answered it here in an improper fraction. Uh, and this is one of the cases where that's going to be okay. Normally, you want to give the answer back in the same form you got it, but we don't use improper numbers or improper fractions, excuse me, like this uh, too much. So we're going to keep this one in 101 over 24 to keep it just like this. Uh, we should try to reduce this thing, of course, but notice that 101 is a prime number. So this actually is the answer right here. So let me circle the answer and say there, we're done there. Okay. Now let's go down here. This time at the bottom of number two, we're actually going to do the same thing. We're going to subtract this thing. So we have to write this thing with a common denominator. Oh, the pen's giving me a little trouble. But let's go ahead and set up two new fractions. This is a minus sign right here. We have a 12 and a 3. And the common denominator would be 12. So we'll put a 12 under both of them. That's a 12 there and a 12 there. Um, and since nothing changed here, nothing will change up here. 11 12ths is still 11 12ths. But here, 3 goes into 12 4 times, and 4 times 2 is 8. So let me write that there. So we just changed the second fraction, keeping the operation of subtraction in between. And now we can say that 11 minus 8 gives us this uh, new fraction here. That's an equal sign, by the way, all over 12. Uh, and 11 minus 8 is 3. Okay, now we could be done right there because that's just like the last one, except this fraction actually reduced because 3 twelves can be written as, well, 3 goes into 3 once and into 12 4 times, so this is 1 fourth. And I'll circle that. There's my answer right there. Oh, sorry for the bad circle. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move on to the next one here. Okay, so now we're going to do problem number three here. And once again, we have uh, two mixed uh, numerals, so let's go ahead and change those. I'll say these are equal to, uh, well, 3 times 5 is 15. 15, uh, 15 plus 1 is 16. So that is 16 thirds right there. Okay, that's the improper fraction. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is 16. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 7 is 39. So we're going to do times, that's my times, uh, 39 uh, divided by uh, 8. Okay, now, uh, this, but this dot here is what I use for multiplication, just like they do right inside there. Now, I could multiply straight across 16 times 39 to get a big number and 3 times 8 to get 24. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to reduce uh, crossways like this. Notice that 8 here, I'm going to cross this off. 8 goes into 8 once and into 16 two times like this. Oh, that's a funny looking 2. Let me see if I can make against a 2. And then also down here, 3 goes into 3. I cross this off one time. And then 39, 13 times. Okay, and now if I multiply on the bottom, I get 1 times 1, which is 1. And then that, remember, is a 2. It's a funky 2, I'm sorry. But 2 times 13 is 26. So there's your answer, 26 divided by 1, or just simply 26. And that's our answer. I'll circle it for us. Okay, same thing down here. We're going to multiply these. Now, notice these are already in fractional form for problem number 4. But I do have um, a division sign right there. So I need to first write this as a multiplication. So I'll do that like this, 16 uh, divided by 27. Sorry for the bad handwriting. And then I'm going to do times. And then I'm going to flip this one, 21 divided by 20. 
So notice that you flip the second fraction and multiply. Notice the division sign changes to multiplication. That's a 16 if you're wondering what that. Let me see if I can fix it, but that's just a 16. That doesn't look much better. Okay, and now we can do some cross-canceling here. It uh, looks like 3 goes into both of these numbers. 3 goes into 21 7 times and into 27 9 times. And 4 goes into 16 4 times and into 25 times. Okay, uh, and then we just multiply across the top. 7 times 4 is 28. That again is a 2, so I'll try to make it better. And on the bottom, this is 45. And that is completely reduced, and there is your answer right there, 28 uh, divided by 45. Okay. Okay, now we move to problem number 5 here, and this is, uh, well, multiplying uh, some numbers as well as some exponents. Okay, so let me be really clear here. When you have the same base, for example, the R and the R, when you multiply them, you add the exponents. Okay, and then uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to do 8 times negative 6. So let me get that going. So here we have, this is going to be equal to, uh, 8 times negative 6 is negative 48. Now that comes from multiplying this 8 and this negative 6. Now we have R to the 4th times R to the 5th. I'm going to write that as R, and I'm going to put a 9 right there because... 4 plus 5 is 9. That's a funny looking 9, but that's what it is. And this is still multiplying in between here, so I'm just going to leave it there for a second. Now we're going to have a T. It's going to be hard to make a T here. All right, let's see if we can make this T. All right, T, here we go. Okay, good. And then we have negative 10 plus 7, which would be negative 3. Okay. Now we would be done right there, except that we also don't leave negative exponents. Uh, to change this into the right answer, we need to do this. We need to take this is equal to uh, negative for the negative sign out front. And on top of this, we'll have 48 uh, times r to the ninth. So r to the ninth, that comes from the r to the ninth. That's r to the ninth. Uh, and this is going to be divided by t to the positive 3. Now, notice that up here I have a negative 3, but in the denominator it becomes positive 3. Uh, that is a really funny looking r. I apologize. That's supposed to be an r. Uh, I don't know why. There we go. Okay, but notice that negative 3 goes down here and becomes positive 3. Okay, still trying to work out the kinks on this pen. It's, uh, oh, it's, it's not as easy as I would like it to be. All right, down here, what we're going to do is we're going to take this 3. This is problem number 6. We're going to take this 3, and we're going to apply it to everything inside there. So this will be equal to 2 to the third power times a cubed raised to the third power, and then b squared raised to the third power. I know that looks funny the way I wrote it, but notice that that 3 has to go to everything inside, and 2 cubed, by the way, is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And here, when you have an exponent raised to another exponent, you multiply it. So, whoop, didn't mean to put that line there. Let me get rid of that. Hold on. Okay, sorry. All right, so a to the 3 times 3 would be a, let me get this a in the right spot here, a to the ninth power, because again, 3 times 3 is 9. Notice the difference up here. When we are multiplying the same base, we added the exponents. Here, when you raise a power to a power, you multiply them. Okay, and this will be followed up by uh, b to the sixth power, like so. And there's your answer. I can try to circle it here. I don't want to run into the other one. Uh, trying to gain some confidence with this pen, too. Okay, so here we go uh, for number seven. Um, well, let me get rid of that line. Hold on a second. Okay. Um, well, maybe I can't get rid of it. Well, we'll just leave it alone there. Okay, so that line is not supposed to be there. All right, this will be equal to, if I can get this going, equal. Uh, we're going to take and do the same thing that we did up there. So u to the 2 times 5 is 10. Now, I'm skipping a little bit of step because just look up here to see what I did. That 5 has to go to that u, and 5 times 2 is 10. And therefore, my v um, here, v, uh, okay, let's see if I can get this to be a v. And that's going to be to the 35 power. I know that's a big number. 5 times 7 is 35. And on the denominator here, I'm going to have u to the 4th and then v to the 10th. Now all we have to do is subtract them. 10 minus 4 is 6, so this becomes u to the 6th power. And then 35 minus 10 is v to the 25th power. I know that's a funny looking v, but there's your answer right there.
right, let's go ahead and try number eight here and see what we get. A couple of things right off the bat. I'm going to write uh, c to the negative 10, and you can see from right here, uh, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. We'll have d to the, well, what is 0 times negative 5? Well, that's still 0. 0 times anything is still 0. And on the bottom, we're going to have, well, 0 times negative 5 is still c to the 0. Okay, and then minus 3 times minus 5 is d uh, to the 15th power, like this, right there. Okay, now notice it's positive, though, because negative times negative is positive. Now, anything raised to the 0 is the number 1 as long as you don't raise zero to uh, zero to zero is undefined but anything else raised to zero is one so this actually becomes c to the negative tenth uh, times one over uh, d to the fifteen times one I don't really need to multiply times one uh, because one times anything that's a d sorry one times anything is just itself I kept it up here though because notice that when I have a negative uh, exponent I can bring it down to the denominator so this will be equal to the one that's on top there and then we'll have c to the tenth power and d to the fifteenth power uh, and there's your answer right there notice that that negative became positive down in the denominator this is just a fraction bar and the one is more of a placeholder I'll try to circle that answer and there you go All right, let's go ahead and try to do uh, problem number nine here. Here we're just adding uh, two uh, polynomials, so we need to just add like terms. Like terms are the x's that have the same exponents. Notice that 8x cubed, between this whole thing, there's no other x cubed, so we're basically going to have right here, this will be equal to, uh, well, 8x cubed will be the first term, x cubed. Now for the second term, I have a square here. Notice there's no other squares, so we're going to be adding 9x squared plus 9x squared. Uh, as far as x's are concerned, I have 6 and then plus a negative 7, so that's actually 6 minus 7 or negative 1x. I can write it as negative 1x or just negative x. And then finally, negative 4 uh, plus 4 is 0, so there it is. We do, you could write plus 0 here, but there's no reason to do that, so this is your answer right here. Okay. Alrighty. Moving down here to this one. Now, this one, notice that there's a negative sign right here, so we're going to have to distribute that, so we will do that. We'll have 5y to the 8. There is minus 5y to the 8, but you see that negative is actually going to pick that, so we're going to actually do minus a minus. So minus a minus is a plus, so we're actually going to have 10y to the 8. So let me explain that again, because notice that we have y to the 8th and y to the 8th. We're adding, so we don't mess with the, um, no, sorry, y to the 8th. We don't mess with the exponents here. And we're just adding like terms. And this negative combined with this negative make that a positive 5, with this other positive 5 in the beginning here makes 10. Now to the 6s, we have 9y to the 6, and we're subtracting 2 away. 9 take away 2 is 7. So we still have a positive value. It's just now down to 7 plus 7y to the 6. Okay, and then finally we have negative 12 minus 13 more. Notice that negative kicks that negative and minus 12 minus 13 is minus 25. Uh, let me see if I can get over there and do that. Minus 25. And there's your answer for that one right there. Okay, you can circle it, but I'm not going to circle that one. Here we got a binomial times a binomial, so we're going to FOIL. FOIL is that uh, first, and then outer, and then inner. Sorry, that's an I. And then last, it stands for first, outer, inner, last. If we do the first two, 2x times 9x, that's 18x squared. Uh, the outer would be five, negative 5 times 2, or whoops, negative 10x. Sorry for that extra mark there. Still trying to get a hold of this pen. It's a little weird. And then the inner would be 7 times 9, which is actually 63x. And then the last one will be uh, 7 times negative 5, which is uh, negative 35. And we could be done there, but these two are like terms. So if we want to add them together, we'll end up with 18x uh, squared and then plus 53, because we have 63 minus 10 is 53x and then minus 35. Let me just go ahead and say this is an 18 right here. It doesn't quite look like one. I'll try to make it better. Uh, not much better. Okay. All right, moving to number 12 here. Now we're going to multiply a binomial times a uh, trinomial. So we'll have to do 
the first term times everything inside and then the second term times everything inside. Let's see if we can get that done here. Uh, so this will be equal to uh, 2w times w squared is 2w cubed and then 2w times 4w is 8w squared. Okay, uh, and then 2w times minus 6 is minus 12w. Uh, okay, then we got to continue minus 3 times w squared is minus 3 w squared uh, minus 3 times 4w is minus 12w minus 12w and then the last one would be negative 3 times negative 6 is positive 18 notice that's a positive 18 sorry for being on an angle here um, so now we have to look at the like terms you only have one cube there so there'll be 2w cubed and then I have 8w squared but we're taking away 3w squared so that's only 5w squares Notice that that 8 here minus the 3 there is uh, 5. Minus 12 minus 12 more would be negative 24w. And then, of course, the plus 18 is the last one. And there's your answer right there. Okay. Here, be careful not to take this 2 and apply it to both. We can't do that here because of that minus sign. What we really want to do is we want to write this as 5u uh, minus 8 times 5u minus 8. That should be in parentheses too. Sorry for the bad handwriting. That's not an S. Those are fives. And that's notice this two means there's two of them. And then we're just going to do FOIL. So this becomes uh, 25u squared. That's the first. The outer is going to be minus 8 times 5, which would be negative 40. So is the inner. So minus 40 for the outer and inner is actually going to make minus 80u. Uh, and then um, the last one is going to be plus 64. And there's the answer for that one. Notice that I took the liberty of doing two things to get that minus 80. That's 5 times negative 8, which is negative 40, and then 5 times negative 8, which is another negative 40, combined to make negative 80 there. And this, of course, is your answer for this. Get that circle around there. Yeah, I'm getting used to the pen, I know. Okay, and then number 14, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, actually take each term and we're going to factor out on the top a 4t uh, to the third power. So on the top, I'll have 4t to the third power times. Now let's see, I have to get back to 8t to the ninth. So 4 times 2 is 8. And this would be t to the sixth because, um, well, 6 and 3 make 9. And next thing I'd have plus, I already got a 4 there. So I just need t to the third um, because t to the 3 and 3 make 6. And lastly, I just need a plus 5 here because the rest of it will be there. When I multiply, and don't forget on the bottom, I also have out here a 4t cubed. Okay, and then number 4t cubed times 5 would be 20t cubed. Then I can actually cancel this term and this term down here since they're the same. And the answer to this one I'll put over here is 2t to the 6 uh, plus t cubed. I know my t's look bad. And then plus, uh, well, 5. Okay, this is a plus sign right here. Let me see if I can make that look more. That's a plus. Oh, boy, I really messed that up. Okay, well, this is a plus sign. Sorry for the bad heading on any plus. Ah. I could go back and fix it, but just make that a plus sign. Okay. All right, moving on to problem number 15 here. Okay, so what we're going to do is just look to see what we can pull out of this. It looks like 3 goes into all the numbers, so I can definitely pull out a 3. And I also have, um, well, let's see, x squared is common to everything and a single y. So I can pull out an x squared and then a single y here. Let me put a parentheses. That's what they all have in common, otherwise known as the greatest common factor. And then we just have to build this back. So 3 times what is 6? Well, that would be 2. I need to get an x cubed. I've already got an x squared, so it'll be a single x. And I need y cubed. I've already got a y, so this will be a y squared. And then we're going to add the next term here. And then 3 times 4 is 12. Um, I have to have another x cubed, so I need to have an x for sure here. And then I need a single y, but I already have one here, so that's that term. And then the last term is going to be, well, let's see, 3 times 3 is already there x squared is already there. I just need a y to the third power so that I can make that into a y to the fourth. When you multiply times that, and there's your answer right there. 
Okay, for this problem right here, we're actually going to try to factor by grouping. We're going to do these first terms by pulling just an x out of those. And that will be x minus y here inside the parentheses. And then plus, if I pull a 3 out of the second two terms, I have 3 times x minus y there. Okay, and now since these are both common to both terms, I can do this. x plus 3 times x minus y. And there's your answer there. And finally, for this one down here, we have to play with these numbers, negative 21. I'm looking here for two numbers. I'm going to put a question mark here and a question mark here. They have to multiply to negative 21, but they also have to add to positive 4. I think you can see that, well, let's see, 3 negative times positive 7. 3 negative times 7 is negative 21, and 7 minus 3 is 4. So that tells me that this factors, and I'll do it right underneath here with two binomials, First, it'll be x minus 3, and the next one will be x plus 7. Okay, let me write that over here so you can see it better. It's going to be x minus 3, and then x, oops, x, that's an x, plus 7. I have to get used to this pen a little bit more. Okay. Okay, taking a look at problem number 18, now we're going to try and factor this one a little bit different here. Notice that 2x squared has to be written as uh, 2x, and then over here we have a single x, because 2x times x is 2x squared. And then this one has to be 9, so I'm going to put a 3 here and a 3 here, okay, because that's how I get 9. And notice that 2 times 3 uh, is 6, and 3 more here make, uh, well, that's going to be 9, and that's not what we have here. So we're probably going to have to do this a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and scratch those out. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, let's try this again. We're going to go 2x here, and then we're going to do x here. And I'm going to put a 9 here and a 1 here. Let's see. Okay, 2x times x is 2x squared. And then 2 times 1 is 2, and 9 do make a 7. So I'll put negative here and positive here. So now if we check it, 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 1 is positive 2x. Take away 9x, which is negative 7x, and minus 9 times 1 is negative 9. Okay, moving to number 19. Here I'm going to do the difference of squares by writing this as 4y squared uh, minus, actually that's in parentheses, by the way, uh, minus uh, 7 squared. So this is using the formula for the difference of squares, which tells me this is 4y uh, plus 7 times, that's a parenthesis if you're wondering, and then 4y minus 7. Okay. Um, and that's using this formula up here. I'll write it. That's a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b. Parentheses, that is a parentheses. Sorry about that, a minus b. Yeah, I'm still having a hard time with this pen, but we'll get this better, I promise. All right, number 20, we're looking here. Let's take that number 64, and we're looking again. I'm going to put little lines like this. Two numbers here, these are question marks, that multiply to a positive 64, but add to negative 16. I think you'll see that uh, negative 8 and negative 8. Right? If you multiply two negatives, you get a positive. 8 times 8 is 64, and you add those, you get negative 16. So this can be written as w minus 8 in parentheses times, another parentheses, w minus 8. Now, since both of those are the same, whoop, that was parentheses right there. Uh, this is parentheses. So since those are both the same, you can just write that as w minus 8, uh, the whole thing in parentheses with a square on it right there. And again, this is an 8, so let me see if I can make that better. Okay, so this is your answer right there. All right, now for number 21, we're just going to solve this equation here. Whoops, let me get rid of that. Sorry about that. And then we're going to do this distributive properly first. And combine like terms, 7m's plus another m. That's 8m's minus 4 here is uh, equal to 5 minus 2 m and then minus 8. Notice that I distributed that negative 2 m here and that negative four times positive is negative. Um, this is an m right here. It's a little funky looking m. Let me see if it's a little better. 
Okay, so this side is already set, 8 m's minus 4. Here I can do 5, take away 8, so that's negative 3, um, and minus 2 m. Okay, now I'm going to add 2 m's to both sides, like this. That's a 2, that's an m, that's some bad writing. Let me see if I can make that better. Okay, I'm going to add 2 m, so we get a total of 10 m's here. Uh, minus 4 is equal to negative 3, and then we'll add 4, and we'll add 4 to get 10, m is equal to 1, which means when we divide by 10, I'm going to divide by 10 on both sides, we get, uh, it's a 10, sorry, we get m is equal to 1 over 10. Okay, and that's your answer. All right, well that concludes the first part of the early assessment review. Um, there are some additional problems and I will post onto Blackboard the uh, answers to those additional problems um, under the file section of your class. Okay.